And then I go through the aisles of the store and I just, oh, I got my card out and I got to have a bean of every size, every <laughs> color, just to make it interesting. And, and I just go loony if I can't find those wax beans or lima beans or uh -huh. butter beans. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> From the blog Random Sweets, I'm Stacey Mergenthal, and this is Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens, a show for people who embrace the warm and cozy spirit of everyday living in the northern Midwest. Like today's guest, my mother-in-law, Marie Mergenthal. Mr. and Mrs. Sidney and Catherine Munson raised Marie, her twin brother Donnie, and their nine younger siblings on a farm near Millbank, South Dakota. And even though Marie's roots are in South Dakota and she now lives in Minnesota, she's always had a worldly eye for the art and vogue fashion industries. New York and Paris would have loved her style and flair for visual merchandising, photography, couture, and costuming. But God kept her right where he needed her most, raising Jason, Lindsay, Betsy, and Ryan, and taking care of her family, especially her husband David, who passed away on Good Friday in 2018. Marie is steadfast in her Catholic faith, and she prays for her family and friends every day. In this episode, Marie is giving away her secrets for tangy dill pickle pasta salad and the calico beans she is so well known for in the family. And if you like a Dairy Queen peanut butter parfait, stick around because Marie has a recipe to make it at home in a 9x13 pan. I've posted photos and these recipes on randomsweets.com. And after you listen to this episode, you'll know why Marie once put up a hippie head shop tent. <laughs> now, while you still have your phone in your hand, please take a minute to subscribe to the show and rate it, which you can usually do that from the show page. I really appreciate your support in helping me grow my audience. And now let's go see what stories Marie has to share with us. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Stacy Show. To the Marie and Stacy Show. <laughs> we should have cocktails here with us. Oh, you know, I do have some. Uh, I, look at that mix down there with rum. I could oh. whip something up. Well, I'm glad that you let Jason and me come into your house today and <laughs> set up a podcast studio in your kitchen. Oh, and we're right next to your big stash of community cookbooks, yeah. which I also curl. Whenever I come here, I'll curl up on your couch with one of those cookbooks. And I have pictures on my phone because I sit and take pictures. And I'm like, oh, I need to remember that recipe. <laughs> oh, Stacy, you should see the boxes I have out in the garage. That oh, was cookbooks. my project this winter. I never got around to it. But I was going to make it easier for you by sorting into salads and casseroles. But, mm. you know, I think I have 15 boxes out there <laughs> and catalogs and magazines. But... I always have in mind who would like to go through that. And mm -hmm. so one of these days, I'll go out to your farm and make an anonymous deposit. <laughs> well, now I'm going to know who it came from. <laughs> I'm just doing my, my bit for the environment. <laughs> I was trying to think, what do, what do we talk about with Marie on this first episode? Because you have so many stories for one thing not even just about food but oh my gosh you always have good stories to tell and I'm a talker I'm sorry <laughs> and you're a talker which is great and you you have kind of the one of your languages of love is food you cook for people you bake for people you live here in Mankato Minnesota alone now and you're you cook for your neighbors and you take care of people around here and and so it'll be fun to talk about some of these food stories with you. And I was thinking, oh, we for sure have to talk about the dill pickle pasta salad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you do have to like cold pasta salads, which a lot of people do. Most people do. But See, these have I'm, dill I'm pickles. Not I'm not a fan of cold salads. But oh, I but ran you... across this one. And since I usually have to feed a crowd, mm -hmm. I have to double it up. or But I want to keep flavor that the flavor and so mm -hmm. when I soak I use every bit of the dill juice when I soak up the shells oh, overnight yeah. it, they yeah. absorb all the dill pickle juice and I think that's what makes it tangy mm -hmm. and that's what makes it worth it so so 
before we actually talk about that recipe, I have a story to tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I met Jason in 2002. Sajin was born in 2001, Kalani in 1999. So they were very young. Sajin was a baby. He was just turning one when I met Jason. And one of the first times that I came to your house in Elk River, Minnesota, which I don't remember if the kids were with or not, but you made supper. And for some reason to this day, I still remember you made a chicken or had rotisserie chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, stove top, and I'm not sure, probably a vegetable. But at that time in my life, I was a very, what well, I almost said very young mom. <laughs> I was 30, so I guess I wasn't really young, but I had two, two babies and was living on my own and to have, for some reason, that hot meal just warmed my heart so much. Aww. And for a long time after that, I made rotisserie chicken <laughs> and mashed potatoes and gravy mm -hmm. and stove top for Kalani and Sage and as a meal, kind of in our meal rotation. Mm -hmm. There was just something so special about it. So oh, thank you. I remember that all these years. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet, Stacy. You oh. always have been. I fell in love with you instantly. And Aww. of course, you're two little kids. I just <laughs> adore them. Yeah, I remember too, Stacy. that year. That's when David was in the hospital waiting for his liver transplant. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very dire at that time. And mm -hmm. you just flew right up here to be with Jason and our family. And then, but your sister was pregnant, ready to <laughs> ready to give birth right then she and there. Did. But So you flew up there to be with Jason, but then you had to turn right back around because that's when Katari right. was born, right? Yep, yep, Katara. Yeah. So, yeah, mm. David had his liver transplant in the mm. afternoon, and I drove up to Minneapolis that night, and you were all, like, sleeping yeah. at the hospital, staying up there, and I got yeah. there, and then all of a sudden Callie went into labor with Katara, and so mm -hmm. I drove down there. Uh, yep. <clears throat> yeah, I would... Uh, I virtually would live at the hospital, sleep, you know, go from floor to floor and sleep mm -hmm. just to just to be there right when the call came. Mm -hmm. You took really good care of him all those years. Yeah, it was very, you know, I lost my identity pretty much because it was 24-7 caring mm -hmm. for him. And now that he'll be gone five years now five years. on March 30th. Oh, yeah. He passed away on Good Friday. And like my brother Donnie says, he always has the luck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> going leaving on during Holy Week, you know, he all in his plan. <laughs> oh, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my twin brother. But we are all very close. Yeah. And so then I thought about a story that I wanted you to tell. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Because <laughs> I love when you tell the story. <laughs> the Munson family, when I did first become part of the family and, and meet you guys. You're from your big farm family from the Millbank, South Dakota area. That's where you grew up. That's where you farmed. Family of 12? 11 children. 11 children. Mm -hmm. And you and Donnie are the oldest. That's right. The twins. But I, I'm, I'm at technically the oldest. Three hours older than Donnie. Okay. <laughs> he always blames his poor eyesight on me because I stepped on his did eye sockets. Did you kick him in the head? <laughs> Well, <clears throat> so you would have, in the summertime, the Munson family get together at the farm. You would all set up tents and campers and stay outside the farm place. And your mom, Catherine, would, would be there. And you, you would always make sure that she was well taken care of that weekend. The, the matriarch of the family. Yep. And I would, everybody would cook and bake and bring food and mm -hmm. share big potluck. And it was this whole long weekend. And I made the salted peanut chews. <laughs> You're not going to tell that. No, I'm not going to. Oh. You are. <laughs> because I love it. Oh, my mom was also guilty in that. <laughs> I know. That's why I want you to tell the story. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, Stacy came with her bars, many, many, many bars. But our favorite, my mom's and my favorite were those salted nut rolls. And so we called it the Survivor Weekend. Oh, that's right. And the reason we call it Survivor Weekend is because the farm is pretty much unattended. And my mom would, uh, she had the rural water turned off. 
And we said, what the heck? We need this place to gather because you <laughs> end up with like 125 people there. Yeah. And pe- people, we didn't care. That's our kind of family. Just to be together at a place where it would accommodate all of us. Mm-hmm. So people decided to come and pitch tents. And then my brother Gordon has, um, I, he's part over a dealership in Millbank that had these big watering tanks for washing cars. No sweat. He just hauled that pickup out there with a big <laughs> tank of water, and people could take showers, and we would, you know, fill up our our pots or our kettles with water and heat that, and and uh, thank God she maintained the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> so it got to be like a one day turned into two day, and then a three day, mm-hmm. and then a four day because everybody wanted to get the best camping spot. <laughs> and we we would have uh, themes, and we wouldn't tell anybody each other's themes because there were grand prizes like twins tickets or oh, yeah. paraphernalia, things like that. And so we would keep our themes quiet <laughs> because we're all vying for the main prize. And uh, I know one year, um, oh, I just love doing stuff like this. <laughs> Your whole family is very into it. It took oh. me a while to get... I'm still trying. To well, get they used they to are a for, affordable family, Very and fun. and you know the Survivor Weekend, it's hush hush. <laughs> well, thank yeah. God it's out eight miles out of town, right? <laughs> and you know our fireworks are better than the mailbanks fireworks mm-hmm. because I had eight brothers and it was it was a testosterone thing. Right, they'd come and load up their trunks filled with fireworks and the bigger the better Mm -hmm. and we had some we had some close calls (laughs) (laughs) and then my mom can I go to bed now can three hours that's an awful long time I need to go to bed now the mosquitoes are getting bad (laughs) and the rest of us oh no no we're gonna have a huge huge bonfire when we're done Mm -hmm. to burn all the boxes from the fireworks (laughs) (laughs) so to get back to the salt (laughs) The salted nut rolls. Salted nut rolls. <laughs> so this is one of those big weekends. So much fun. And there were still some salted nut rolls left. And my mom and I are eyeing them. <laughs> and so I I always bring extra bags, you know. Mm-hmm. So I go there while no one was around. I, I think they were at church. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> those the goody goodies went to church yeah yeah we went the night before <laughs> you know anyhow so there i i begged them all up i think maybe i left two <laughs> you know i begged them all up because after all they had to be for mama and me mm-hmm. and then i go barreling out the, the back door and i i misstepped and my bag just <laughs> all the bars they went flying up in the air Right for everyone to see. Wait, I didn't know about that part. Oh, you... Oh. No. <laughs> you didn't... <laughs> I only thought it was funny that you were sneaking some for you oh. and Grandma Kay. <laughs> no, they went and saw her going out the back door on that concrete slab there. I missed up in it, and they just went flying. Oh, no. And so I was discovered. <laughs> oh, it was so embarrassing. But I collected them all anyhow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, that's just a, it's a fun story and yeah, you know, it, but, but to get back on the survivor weekends, uh, um, every year it'd be a theme. I know, uh, I had this one theme and I had to commandeer Donnie and Steve to be Cheech and Chong because I was going to go with the hippie mode. And then, um, even David and grandma was in on it mm-hmm. and I, I made up a, a tent for like a, um, head shop with all my paraphernalia that I managed to save and then I had a little car then I decorated like a bug like the Vol, um, Volkswagen mm-hmm. with the flowers on it stuff like that and I remember I was, went to bed about 3 a.m. that night and Betsy comes running upstairs mom mom they're going to take your car to town <laughs> I go no they're not so I had to go down by the fire and watch my car but anyhow, so um, I'm dressed up as De- uh, Janice Joplin, and uh, my mom was in on it. She's the the hippie old lady. Mm-hmm. But Betsy had that um, tent tie dyed tent that she had done. Like it says, make Munson's not love, <laughs> or make love not, not Munson's. Munson's. Oh. And she had bought bra strong 
along the oh, lines right. there. And it was a uh, it was a big thing in the '60s when they were burning your bra, you know. So later on that night, we're at the big bonfire. It was the burning of the bras. I would like to burn all mine too. <laughs> <laughs> And here's our mother. She's she's almost ninety, mm-hmm. throwing her bra into the fire, <laughs> and uh, and remember David's trying to leave to go up to uh, see his uh, aunt up in Cooperstown. He had a little car, and all of us women are throwing the bras on his car, and he can't leave. And he was so frustrated. He's trying oh. to get out to get those bras off, and as soon as he got them all off, there we are again, putting them all back in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We would, that, but that's our family. We would have so much fun over nothing. Well, just uh, being together. Yeah. I, you guys just go all out and mm. have costumes or themes. Oh, yes. And wigs and mm. just so much, so much fun. And my family is, we're not like that. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're out there, but you know, and, and then it, it also, like I said, you know, it would grow, it would grow because friends of friends want to come. Mm-hmm. And my mom, and this is carrying on my mother's, she welcomed everybody, mm-hmm. all, all her kids, friends, and it was just a gathering place. Mm-hmm. In fact, I, I'm trying to remember, was it her 85th birthday or not? I think it was, where that, that year, the theme was the 50s, mm. and because uh, they were going to have a, a movie on the north side of the house. Oh. With a projection, mm-hmm. and uh, so and they had so many games. There was just so much that was worked into it. It kept getting more and more elaborate. Mm-hmm. And I had uh, the wig. I was a, a bowling shirt with the Striker Sisters, and this <laughs> and this wig is like a big beehive, but it's like three feet high, you know. <laughs> and I remember our priest came out from town, and we had a mass there. Oh, in that house, really? Yes, okay. for our mother, a mass, Aww. and and um, it was in the family room area. Mm-hmm. And can you can imagine the number of people. And Donnie is so worried that the floor is going to give way <laughs> because there were so many people there. Right, and nobody had been living in that house for no, many years. No, mm-hmm. but uh, um, yeah. God, God saw that that wouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after all, the priest is giving mass. Right. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah. So let's talk about the dill pickle pasta salad because okay. I feel like I tried it for the first time only within the last couple of years, yes. maybe last year for sure. We were at Lindsay and Jesse's at the lake, right? And the buzz for the day, you know, was Marie's going to bring her dill pickle pasta salad and she's going to make a spicy one too. And so yeah. you made two batches, and one was a spicy one. Yes, last year was the first, uh, second year I made that that you did. Okay. And I also made another batch to uh, that Betsy took with her out to um, to the gathering in T, South Dakota. Oh, because sure. Because the uh, the farm gathering had moved down to my brother's house. Sid, I call him Jr. <laughs> uh, in T, South Dakota, and and so they have. I I don't know. I don't know if it's 100 people, but they have 100 people that come to that. Yeah, that's So what every year about. it's a toss-up going between that one or the Botkers on the mm-hmm, lake. Mm-hmm. It's a hard call. It is. So. Yeah. But the, so the dill pickle pasta salad, then I did, Kalani liked it so much, and so you mailed the recipe over for her, and then I made a copy for myself, too, and I've made it a few times. Mm-hmm. And to one of my little family gatherings... I brought it with me and was all excited, but most of my family, oh, I didn't really like dill pickles. So I brought the salad home and Jason and I ate it because we really like it. And it's so interesting because you, well, you can walk us through the recipe, Mm -hmm. but you soak the pasta shells in the pickle juice after they're cooked. It's so cool. um, I boil them il dente Mm -hmm. and then I put them in the pickle juice to soak overnight so the shells totally absorb all the liquid. But that's what makes it different that mm-hmm. they had that tang to them. So much flavor, and it's right like you said. It's within the in the pasta. It's not just what you're adding, stirring right. in. Right. So let's... and you know that was that that wasn't something I picked up in a recipe. That's something that I just devised myself. Your addition to well, yep. it was that's my brilliant. <laughs> that's my spin on an ordinary pasta salad. Mm-hmm. And then I just very particular. I mean. It, Sometimes it's the little details that make all the difference. Yeah. So, 
But uh, um, did you want to go through kind of what's yeah? In it? So it's um, <coughs> pasta shells. <coughs> the yeah, pasta I use shells. the uh, small pasta shells. Mm -hmm. They absorb the liquid better, and plus, I think they visibly they look more appealing. I think. Sure. And it's easier when you take a bite because you're adding some cheese and some pickles, so. You want to be able to have your spoon or your fork mm -hmm. handle a few of the ingredients at one time so you're using the smaller pasta right. shells. Yep, so you cook those al dente and then what? Then I take the baby gherkins, the baby dills. Mm -hmm. I get those because they're firmer. If they're bigger, they can get kind of soft and oh, yep. mushy. So mm -hmm. I always buy the very small gherkins. I know all about gherkins because my mom had us work a 25-acre <laughs> cucumber <laughs> For, for school money. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yep. We sold, and we would go up to Wilmot and sell those. Okay. And my reward was an ice cream cone. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of work for an yeah, ice cream cone. Yeah, we were battling the mosquitoes. But mm -hmm. that was my, my mom was an in innovator. Yeah. And she did what she had to do. She had to manage a lot of kids a and lot a huge of, garden and, yeah, and the farm. And the, and, yeah. And her, mm -hmm. her garden was the best. But anyhow, to get back to um, okay, the the gherkin dills, and then I I like the the brick cheddar cheese, and I would mm. get either cheddar or extra sharp cheddar, and then I would cut those up myself, cube them up myself, mm -hmm. and then I take white onion and dice it fine, and then I also get fresh dill. That's important. Yeah, you know I've and you know everything is about appearance too, <laughs> and I and I cut up the dill. So it's just feathery. Mm -hmm. And uh, Heilman mayonnaise, I only use Heilman mayonnaise. <laughs> Jason has taught me that. I used to do the Kraft Real Mayonnaise, and now I know it's only Heilman's. Heilman mayonnaise, <laughs> yeah. And sour cream. Oh, yep, I forgot about the sour cream. And then, to put the punch in it, cayenne pepper. Mm-hmm. And then you can put in as much as you dare. Or you don't have to put any at all. Right, So if right. you don't like any spice whatsoever, mm -hmm. okay. And then I combine all that. And the longer you put that in the refrigerator to say, um, you know, everything, all the flavors will meld together. And, mm -hmm. and it just becomes more and more intense. So, yeah. And then it'll last a long time. And I don't know if you know this, Stacy, but I guard my pails. My, like ice ice cream, cream my, my ice cream <laughs> pails. And as a matter of fact, I got a note over there to Lindsay. I, I had a tubular pail from, because I go get them from the bakery. And I brought ham soup for her for Christmas Eve. And I have not seen that one back yet. <laughs> You're waiting for the pail. I have a note. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lindsay, if you're listening. <laughs> Marie needs her pail back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a public service announcement for yes, Marie's Mails. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the pasta salad, so I have a favorite pickle, and they're pickle, dill pickle slices. Oh. And they're my favorite pickle and the favorite pickle juice, so I've used those and cut those slices up for the salad. So gherkins work great. Any kind of pickle that's your favorite is what you could use to yeah, make the that's salad. that's true. That's mm -hmm. true. So the... The spicy one, when you do that, that was just coming from some cayenne then, right? Cayenne I mean, pepper. From, from my, the spiciness in mine. Yeah, like yes, when, when we yes. were at Lindsay's yes, and people were like, easy. oh, she has a spicy one too today. Yeah, yeah that, that's very easy to overdo. So, <laughs> But, you know, a lot of my family members like, like it spicy. And this is one of those pasta salads that, well, for me, especially when Jason's not home, I like having just a pasta salad like this and then if there's no meat in it I can just have some um like the dried salami or some or sausage on the side of it or you could add a little bit of chicken to the serving probably I would make that for brandy over here she, mm. li she liked cold pasta salads okay so I'd bring them over mm -hmm. I could always count on my f my neighbors eating <laughs> my my rejects <laughs> Not rejects. <laughs> They're just extras. Or, but. or my bounty. <laughs> or, or wait, Marie made way too much and Marie can't eat all that or really shouldn't eat all that. <laughs> but Marie could eat all that. <laughs> That's a whole other topic, though. Is I mean, it's hard enough to cook for two. How do you cook for one? My mom's in that same position. And you want to make some of these things, but they only last so long. And right. like a pasta salad, you can't freeze that. Right. And eat it later. So... 
finding ways to help s- spread my, the love. You're, you're knocking on the doors and delivering well, packages. My, I have, in, in where I live now, I have a lot of single grandparents, mm. elderly people, and they'll end up just not cooking for themselves because yeah. it's too much effort. Yep. It's too much effort to buy groceries. And I just, that's just the way I was raised with all my brothers and sisters, eight mm. brothers, you can imagine. Right. Yeah. So um, I found a way. And, you <laughs> know, Stacy, it just gives me a lot of joy. Yeah. And if it tasted horrible, they would never tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you would ever make anything that's horrible, but, you know. And, yeah, <laughs> you're not. Well, you know, Stacy, I have an addiction. <laughs> And it's uh, it's clipping coupons for what I don't know. I'm not going to live long enough to, to make everything that I clip, oh, but it's so interesting. Clipping recipes, you mean? Oh, did I? I meant recipes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, coupons would work, too. But you've said that before, and you know what? My grandma Janet, she she did the same thing, and she said the same thing to me. Stacy, I don't know why I clip these out of the newspaper, or why I have these magazines. I've always said, reading it and, and just... Thinking about food and ingredients being put together mm. is a joy itself. You don't have to be in the kitchen making those things, but what's the difference between reading a cookbook or a magazine than a book? And see, I, I think it's fine. From, I learned from my mother that learn to make something with what you got on hand. Mm-hmm. Sometimes things will be tight and um, run to the cupboard and you can make something. But during COVID, I had a new friend, you know. I got a new friend. Her name was Brenda. Oh, that's right. Yes, your friend Brenda Gant. <laughs> yes, yes. So my, I, every day I'm listening to Brenda, and she had this quote like, uh, if you can't make something from what you got in the cupboard, you're not much of a cook. Right. We all do have enough stuff in our cupboards. We could put something together. And so when I look at the, all these recipes mm-hmm. that I'm clipping, I'm thinking, oh, I got that. I got that. Well, I can substitute that and make mm-hmm. that. And, mm-hmm. and if I don't like it, then my neighbor will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can always always come up with new things. And, right, I mean, right. Sometimes those are the best dishes is when you're like, oh, I ran out of such and mm-hmm. such, and so I added this other thing. And no, no, what was it that I did? I should have penciled that down. Write it down, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what about your beans? Because... Oh. Everybody in your family is like, mom's bringing her beans, and everybody's so excited, and then they take some home with them because they love your beans. There's and more. you don't even have it written down, right? No, mm-hmm. it's Marie's beans, you know. And I have, uh, I have, I have a, a, a nephew and a godson from Texas, and he swears that he's got, he's duplicated my beans. Oh, really? And I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> hold I, it, hold it. Showdown. I will be the one to determine that. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. know, and I know your parents are vouching for you, but no, 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 I have to vouch for that. <laughs> no, and I started making these beans back in the seventies. Oh, okay. And I th- they originally called like um, calico beans. Okay. Yep. But uh, um, I added more stuff to it, and terrible stuff, I have to say, like bacon grease. <laughs> Hamburger grease. Moderation, you know. Tons of brown sugar. (laughs) All the bad good stuff. (laughs) The stuff that makes it actually taste good. And then I go through the aisles of the store and I just, oh, I got my card out and I got to have a bean of every size, every (laughs) color, just to make it interesting. And and I just go loony if I can't find those wax beans or lima beans or butter beans. Oh, how interesting. (laughs) <laughs> and then I had these huge roasters because, you know, I have to make a lot. Mm-hmm. And and uh, never worry about running out of the s- a sauce because if you got enough bacon grease or grease, you need ketchup, mustard, Worcester sauce. Oh, I gave you my secret. That was the grease. <laughs> so... But, That's right. We were not going to reveal the the secret. And, and if you're if you're running low and you look at the crown, when well, you're running low, well, I hope you got a couple cans of Bush's baked beans to kind of mix in there, and, and they'll never know the why. You know? <laughs> right. <clears throat> but I'll go out to these get-togethers at the farm, the Survivor weekends, and uh, we'll be sitting around waiting for the five o'clock meal. And I notice my brothers, 
We're sitting there talking, and I noticed they had these white styrofoam cups. Hmm. Seemed to be eating something out of them. And, you know, they they had rules, rub rules. You know, they weren't supposed to dip into the beans. Mm-hmm. And I go in the house, and I see it's getting lower and lower. <laughs> and, you know, I figured it out. They're cheating. <laughs> You're, so they're out there eating yeah. the beans. And I remember that was pre, Lane. Pre my lunch, baby, pre-supper. Yeah, my baby brother, Lane, mm. otherwise known as Rocky. I'm giving away all the, they're going to kill me for this. <laughs> they all have, see, Marie, Marie left home when they are still little. So I, when I left home, I had, I kept calling them the names that I called them when they were little. Mm-hmm. And you still do. And I still, still do. do. Mm-hmm. So they know when I want to talk to JR, they know who's on the line. Mm-hmm. So, oh, <clears throat> there's plenty of stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, I would love to hear all the stories about, I mean, when I think about feeding that many kids and eight of them are boys. So, yes, and they yes. were in sports and how in the world. And well, nowadays, this, I can't even imagine when eggs this, are $8. This is, <laughs> this is no lie. I mean, we, I would have to peel a, it was a, a roaster, mm-hmm. but I would have to peel that twice a day full of potatoes. And and when the dinner is served, I mean, it was, uh, they would dive right in the middle and then you had to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> but my mother, well, we, Betty and I, there's th- there were three girls. And Betty, who is 11 months younger than us twins, mm-hmm. and then our baby sister, Kathy. But we always still accused our mother of favoring the boys, <laughs> no matter what. You know, we, we joke, but we had such love. It was a mm-hmm. great, great, great family. Mm-hmm. Didn't have a whole lot of material things, but that caused us to read, use our imagination, mm-hmm. uh, make do with what we had. And, you know, today, Stacy, I still favor that. I get uh, overwhelmed by the Mall of America. Oh. I do not like too many choices. Mm-hmm. Although Amazon <laughs> and the UPS, man, they're my good friends. <laughs> <laughs> He'll soon receive a package of baked beans with a note. Return the bucket. I need my pail yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you, you've taken... So I don't, I don't remember what you had in Elk River when I first met your family for vegetable gardens, or if you did, but you yes. have always had so many flowers, and you guys had a pool there, and it was just, it was so beautiful. It was All idyllic. the work that you put, so it was just like your mom. Yeah, it was idyllic. Mm-hmm. We had uh, a little, a creek that went back by us, a pond, a tack barn, that one day I was going to turn into a business, a wreath-making business. And back there on the acreage, I was going to grow my own wildflowers and make wreaths for selling online. But with David's illness, that just took that dream away. But Mm -hmm. because when I grew up with in South Dakota, like I did, my mom's gardens were huge, huge. And I'm not lying when I said she had 400 tomato plants. We had so many tomato plants that uh, we could afford to have a, a tomato fight. (laughs) <laughs> and so my mother wouldn't let us in the house dripping with juice and seeds until we hosed off. Mm-hmm. And there was that too many tomatoes that we could do that. But And then can and can. And everything that we ate came from the farm with the exception of um, Alberta peaches. Oh, okay. Um, the cows, the pigs, chickens... Oh, there's stories there. <laughs> you know, like one time my mother sent, told my brother she needed a couple chickens for supper. Yeah. And I'm looking out over the sink out the kitchen window, and I see about 30 birds flopping around out there in the front yard. And I said, Mama, how many, how many chickens did you need? <laughs> and she said, well, two or three. And I go, oh, well... I will never forgive my brothers for that because guess who's up all night cleaning chickens and they 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 got more than they oh brought, yes oh, they <laughs> did oh, no. I mean this was a story on the radio down in Sioux Falls oh no <laughs> oh I'm telling tales oh yeah yeah 
got to, mama, you got to be uh, detailed. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, um, they never went to waste. Sure. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure you had, did you have a, at, at that house, so I'm trying to picture, was there a basement, like a cellar? Where did you keep all the canned when you would can? It was the basement. The basement. Yes. That, that what on the farm in South Dakota, you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, in Millbank. Mm-hmm. Yes. That used to be a huge mansion. It was called the Gainer Mansion in the late 1800s early 1900s mm. it was huge they would have dances and it was so big okay and i and i was born in 47 but i have memories back to like 1949 mm-hmm. i can recall things and they revamped the house moved it to a new basement took away the wrap around veranda and the mm. upper deck porch mm-hmm. the bay windows and modernized it and i hated it you know yeah. um the yeah. 1950s people were doing that to these homes and right. should have kept the personality the old home mm-hmm. thank goodness i can remember getting slivers on the porch oh sure but i loved it so yeah um just i want to circle back here to those beans because oh you well <laughs> you know, that's fine <clears throat> i'm just thinking so you have all these beans, and then the sauce. You said you're just kind of mixing some ketchup and mustard and Worcestershire, and okay. But you have brown sugar, and then well, you just I, slow I start, cook them, right? I start with a good deal of the drippings. Um, I suppose about, a, and now I'm just like I have a big Dutch oven. I put mm-hmm. I suppose about an inch, inch and a half, or two inches maybe of the uh, of the bacon drippings and the. Oh. I saved all of it. Mm-hmm. Um. And then I would use like a keg or two of ketchup and a half a bottle of mustard. Uh, well, before I added the ketchup and the um, mustard, I put in tons of brown sugar. And I let that absorb all the drippings. Oh, okay. Because that's the foundation right mm-hmm. there. And then I used the, the ketchup and uh, the uh, mustard to almost fill it to the brim of the Dutch oven. Okay. And because I had a roaster, a huge, I use these huge blue roasters. I don't know if you ever see them anymore. All the things that I have are from ages ago, <laughs> and I'm lost without them. Yeah. In fact, when I packed up to come down here, I had to have my favorite. I had this uh, mixing for, uh, do, um, what's it called, a Swedish dough fork oh yeah it's uh things i have to have it's just like Mm -hmm. it's like marie is not the tim the tool man but marie's (laughs) got her kitchen tools yes you do (laughs) so anyhow to get back to that sauce and then when i've got it and i taste it because i want it to have a tang to it yeah you know because the mustard you know the the amount of mustard puts a tang in and then that's when if it's all right then i add the worcester okay to it and I believe that's it. But to get back to the beans, with all the beans, I add um, a couple of onions. Okay, just diced up onions. Uh, yeah. Are you putting hamburger in there? Are you putting bacon in there? You're using I bacon put, grease, I, but is there bacon in I, there? I, yes. What yes. about hamburger? Hamburger, too. Okay, okay. And it depends upon the size of the crowd. Mm. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I suppose I would use... I, I don't have my... Well, I could in, use anywhere five to ten pounds of sure. uh, hamburger and probably three to five pounds of bacon. Okay. And these are things, see, that you can, don't have to do the day of. You can do these things well before. Mm-hmm. Well, they probably, these beans, I'm assuming, taste better if you let them sit and kind of meld together for a couple of days. Well, I I don't mix up the beans. I, I worry about the beans getting mushy. Oh, okay. So, um, but everything else can be prepped and cooked and baked and done before. Hmm. And then I would have one of those big, what do you call those big roaster ovens that have the water in the bottom. And... Oh, like those, like the big white ones? Yes, that you plug yes. In and I then... have one of those. Okay. Well, I have it right out here in the garage as we speak. <laughs> I think we've borrowed that before to yes. make ham because it's so I big think, and nice. Yeah. I think I had to haul it up to Bismarck. <laughs> And Lindsay has used it. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. Um, and then that, that all gets dumped to that for the party. Okay. And so my goal was to fill that to the brim. Yeah. And you never worry about 
too much because people, you would have little containers Mm -hmm. to send home with people. Yep. Yep. Jason will always come home with some wherever we've been. (laughs) So, yep, I always do that. And, you know, I don't do that so much anymore. I say, I say, you know, because I wouldn't allow uh, Betsy or Lindsay in the kitchen because it was such a small kitchen Mm. and too much traffic. And I was worried about somebody getting burned or being spelling because... That happened to my mom when they revamped that house, that farmhouse. The traffic's coming through her kitchen, and she was just always livid about that. But one time she was uh, canning, and one of those huge pressure cookers exploded on her. Oh. And she landed in the hospital. Hmm. So, and I always think about opening up an oven when you're trying to bring out some hot mm-hmm. s- sweet syrupy kind of stuff that would scald and burn. burn. So I would not I would not let Lindsay or or Betsy help much in the kitchen, and so um, they could do cleanup though. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> but my daughters turned out to be great great cooks, and I'm going. Oh my gosh! Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> Osmosis, I guess. I can remember when um, Jesse and Lindsay went down to San Diego right after they got married. He was doing a fellowship down there. Mm. And Lindsay was doing Thanksgiving down there. And Ryan flew down from Salt Lake City down there for Thanksgiving. And then Ryan calls and reports to me, Sorry, Mom, I think Lindsay's a better cook than you are. Ryan. <laughs> and I go, oh, oh. But, yeah, that was good. But that's good, though. That yeah. is good. Yeah. And you'll have to make sure all your good recipes get handed down and passed on and you know you they'll know. probably have to tape me in my hospital bed <laughs> <laughs> well i'm working we're on covering it. some here and you're yep you're working on putting things together mm-hmm. but um, i'm stacy is the, i'm walking through my memories mm. you know and I, I have saved every note card every letter and they get filed with because I have a folder, a book for each of my siblings. Oh, okay. And they're, you know, what to do with those Christmas pictures they mm-hmm. send of their kids. I put it in with them in, oh, okay. in, their, in their folder. And lately, I'm going through correspondence cards. Hey, did you know there's some money in those? <laughs> <laughs> Time to cash out those Christmas cards. <laughs> you know, you should have written that thank you note. You got a gift card in there to like coast to coast or <laughs> Sears or I wonder if this is still good. <laughs> well, I don't want to stop, but we'll wrap it up for this episode. Okay. But I mean, I have things sitting in front of me that, you know, we talked about the pasta salad, but I have the dill pickles recipe sitting in front of me that is David's mom, right? So Lillian's recipe that yes. she hand wrote in 1974. Right. So I want to talk about the pickles, which Mm -hmm. we could do more in the summertime when people Mm -hmm. are starting to pickle. Mm -hmm. And I have a recipe here handwritten from your mom for the fluffy white white frosting. So this looks to me like it's kind of the seven minute frosting like my mom talked about. So I would love to come back and talk about this one too. My mom was famous for her Lady Baltimore cakes. Is that, and that, that was the frosting. Nuts and pineapple? Or um, no? The Lady Baltimore cakes was, was the white icing with a coconut on them, but the filling to the cakes was pineapple. Okay, okay, she, yeah. So we want to talk about that sure. too. So we have all kinds of things. And Jason always talks about you would make this kind of a peanut butter parfait ice cream dessert. And you sent that, that to me, but I want to talk about that one too. <laughs> See, I'll we have folders sitting out here, all these things. <laughs> That was one of my big favorite ones from up in Deerwood. Well, let's talk about that one. Do you have it with you? Yes, I, I don't, got it. Right I don't have it. here. It's on my Deerwood, my uh, trucking letterhead. <laughs> and I, I took that out to... Um, so the peanut buster parfait is something that both Jason and I like to eat at the Dairy Queen. I think that's what they call it, right? Is the peanut buster parfait. Oh, Those yeah. are from the 70s. There's... Like, Vanilla ice cream, some kind of you make some kind of a sauce, so it's well, not the just sauces, a sauce. Yeah, and that's that's very hard to do because you definitely have to boil it eight minutes and stir okay. it constantly. Is yeah. it evaporated milk, sweetened condensed evaporated milk, evaporated milk, milk um, chocolate chips, or I would use like the Hershey 
chocolate in a can. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And salted Spanish peanuts. Like the red skin ones, right? Yes, with okay. the salt on. Oreo cookies. Powdered sugar. What does the powdered sugar go in? The sauce? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then a stick of Fleshman's. You got two cups of powdered sugar, two-thirds cup of chocolate chips, or that can of chocolate syrup, which I liked. Mm Mm-hmm. A 13-ounce can of carnation evaporated milk, a stick of Fleshman's, and need to boil and stir constantly for eight minutes. See, if you don't do it long enough, it's never going to um, set. It's not going to set and freeze. Right. What's the Fleshman's? Is that a margarine or a yes, butter? Yes, yes. Mar- so it has to be margarine? Well, I, oh. I that's what I would use at the okay. time, always Fleshman's margarine. Mm-hmm. And then it has to be cooled very very completely before you put it over the Spanish peanuts and ice cream. Okay. Well, it, it's like crushed um, Oreo cookies. So the bottom layer is... A, with the butter like and the crust crushed of Oreo typical, cookies. Typical, okay, right? Yeah. And then um, then you put the half a gallon vanilla ice cream, mm. and you soften a little, that a little bit beforehand. Mm-hmm. And then you uh, put on the Spanish peanuts, the okay. salted Spanish peanuts, and then that sauce. Oh, the sauce goes over the top, the top of the peanuts, yep. and then you freeze it. And then, you know, that's something that, since when I lived up in Deerwood, you could keep that in your freezer, and when company would come over unexpectedly, you'd just pull it out and you cut off the Magically square. have a dessert. Yes. <laughs> if Marie wasn't sitting there eating it. Right. <laughs> well, I'll have to make that for Jason. Okay. But I was going to say, you have recipes you're going to talk about later. Maybe you can put in Jason's. My my own concoction, my jello salad. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and how do you even do it anymore? Because we can't find apricot you have, jello. You have, to, you have to order it online. You have to order it online? I di- but I did that for Minnesota Hockey Day. I made that. You ordered it online I for Hockey Day? I ordered it online. Day? Six packages of apricot jello, and I think it cost me 10, 12 bucks. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that apricot has the tang to it. Betsy says she duplicates that by um, combining orange and peach. Oh, okay. I haven't tried that out. But, you know, it's very hard to find. Yeah. We can't find it because Jason's been looking because he likes to make that jello salad Mm -hmm. with... With the secret ingredients that you can see right through the jello. <laughs> we'll share that another time. See, so stay way- tuned for another Stacy and Marie so you I find see. out what's in the jello. What a good mom. She got in the fruits and vegetables right. in the jello. Right. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll talk about the apricot jello yeah. <laughs> some other time on another episode, which we'll do. Is there anything else? What else did you have on your list? I just put down the jello salad. <laughs> That's yeah, it. well, I'm glad we'll you did because I didn't, yeah. I didn't remember mm-hmm. that one. and that, that's, Boy, I should. Jason, yeah, he likes that. I'm mm-hmm. not, you know what? And I did not know that he liked it. I was surprised. Oh, yeah, he likes that. It's and, fr- you know, it's so fresh. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we'll, we'll come back and <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. We'll let you spill the, the, the give the dirt on your brothers. And, well, and I'll if, mention all of them. Steve and Jr. and Johnny and Bobby and Gordon and Arlen and Lane and Betty, my sister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Marie. Was, Thank you. It was so much fun, Stacy. I thought so too. So that's why I want to do this again with you. Okay. Please. Love to. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Remember to get the recipes for dill pickle pasta salad and peanut buster bars on randomsweets.com. And even though Marie didn't have a written recipe, I added her foundational ingredients for her bean dish there too. And those pickles I mentioned are Grillo's pickles, not world's best. (laughs) Next time Marie joins us, I'm hoping she'll share her mom Catherine's recipe for Lady Baltimore cake and seven minute frosting plus her own mother-in-law, Lillian Mergenthal's dill pickle recipe, which even specifies what time of day to pick the cucumbers. And of course, her own apricot jello salad with those surprise fruit and vegetables. I'm still taking cheesy hash brown casserole recipes for an episode I'm working on for the end of April. So if you still want to share yours, email it to me at stacy at randomsweets.com. 
And thank you to my sister Heidi, who recently shared her mother-in-law Judy Thompson's recipe with me. I'd also love to hear your ideas for episodes and guests, especially if it's you who would like to join me. Email me at Stacy S-T-A-C-I, at randomsweets.com. Really, thank you for listening. And please subscribe, follow, rate, and review Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Thank you to those of you who have sent me messages and notes, just letting me know that you're listening and enjoying the show. I appreciate it really more than you will ever know. <laughs> Sweet wishes.